Gentleman. The gentleman from California is recognized. I move to strike the record for a number of words. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. And I yield to the gentleman from California. I thank the gentleman. My uh, apologies to Mr. Jones, who was about to stand up and, uh, and, and speak on this issue. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate your sincerity and your extraordinary work on the, uh, on the issue, a very, very difficult issue. And I share with you the uh, obvious compassion that you have for our troops, uh, those that are there and those that have been wounded. However, if I might uh, ask a, uh, pose a question, the Commander-in-Chief, who presumably had the advice of the generals on the ground and in the Pentagon, has stated clearly that at the beginning of the next fiscal year, that would be September uh, 30th or October 1st of this year, uh, that there would be 68,000 troops on the ground in Afghanistan, and that there would be a steady drawdown or a steady pace so that at the end of the fiscal year there would be some 40,000 troops uh, in. That would be September 30, 2013. Now, a steady drawdown would assume that, you know, you take 28,000 troops, you remove them on a steady basis, so that over the course of that year, you would have half the troops in the country and the other half would have been gone. That being the case, you don't need to budget for all 68,000 being there the entire year. In fact, you budget for something between 40,000 and 68,000. However, the budget that we have, before, the appropriation that we have before us actually assumes that all 68,000 are going to be there until October 1st of 2013. That's not what the President has said. That's apparently not what the generals have planning and what the planning and execution is. So what this amendment simply does is to recognize what it is that the generals intend to do as commanded by the Commander-in-Chief. Now, we may disagree with that, but the advice just given to me by the Chairman is that we ought to pay attention to the Generals, who are apparently saying a steady drawdown. So there's $12 billion, $12.5 billion at stake here, and what we're trying to do is to capture that. Now, at least there'd be concern that something would go awry and the drawdown wouldn't occur. The appropriation actually places a $3,200,000,000 billion cushion for unexpected contingencies. So what are we doing here? Do we care about the deficit or not? My amendment simply speaks to let's be wise with the taxpayer's money. Let's not spend, let's not appropriate money that should not or is not apparently going to be necessary. And if there's a contingency, there's $3 billion cushion built into this budget and into this appropriation already. I uh, yield back my time to the gentleman from Massachusetts. Mr. Chairman, how much time have I remaining? You have two minutes remaining. I strongly support the effort by my colleague from California, and I would say to the distinguished chairman of the subcommittee, <clears throat> it is certainly the case that once the society, through its democratic processes, has determined what it, it wants to do, in a military area, then we need the technical advice from the military experts. But there is a prior question with regard to Afghanistan. Should we be staying there? It wasn't up to the military, and they never claimed that it was to go in on their own. They went pursuant to a vote of this House and of the Senate. And it is the duty of the members of this House to decide whether taking all of the factors into account the time has come to wind it down or not. Once a decision is made, then we listen to the military. Clearly, what is at stake here is not, in this amendment, simply a technical question of the way in which the logistics of a drawdown are handled, but really whether or not the House wants to affirm that the time has come to begin a steady withdrawal. Now, many of us would like to go more quickly than this amendment would allow, but probably we don't have the votes for that. But I disagree with the notion that this is a matter on which the elected representatives of the American people must defer to military experts. Yes, once we have made the democratic decision about what to do, but in all of the factors being taken into account, the time has come, just as this House authorized the military to go in, 
to reaffirm the decision that the time has come to begin to withdraw. And I very much support the gentleman's amendment in that particular context. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from North Carolina.